This is another video by Pet Rock, and today I'm working on my wife's 98 Ford Mustang. It's a 3.8 liter with a 7.5 inch rear end. And today I removed the axles to replace the spider gears, and while I did that, I also noticed that the axle seals have been leaking. You can see all the dirt and crud that has accumulated on it from a long period of time of leaking slowly, thankfully. So I'm going to be replacing the seal and the bearing while I'm in here. So for instructions on how to remove the axles, you can watch my uh, video on how to replace the spider gears on this differential. It's quite simple. I'll link to that video in the description. So here's a little bit of a closer shot. You can kind of see the amount of dirt that has accumulated on this from the oil and grease. You can see how like this bolt right here, for example, is covered with dirt, but this one's not. That's because this one got soaked with oil and this one did not. So this job requires some special tools, like a tool to remove the bearing. Thankfully you can rent most of the tools from your local auto parts store, for example AutoZone or Napa or whatever. So the first kit you need is the rear axle bearing re remover set. Say that three times fast. It's part number 27129. I don't know if you can read that on camera because red on red doesn't really show up very well. Inside it has three different size bearing pullers that you can slide in there and use a slide hammer to pull out the bearing. So the second part you need to attach to the bearing puller is a slide hammer. You can also rent these at, Aut at AutoZone. They have two different kits for this. There's a kit that just has the slide hammer which is 27033 and there's a kit that has the slide hammer plus some additional puller attachments which we don't need for this job. Its part number is 33627026. All I care about in this kit is the slide hammer. So the first thing you need to do is you need to remove the outer seal. You can get a pry bar or a large screwdriver or even an open end wrench. Just jam it in here and pry out. Or a specialty seal puller like this one. And tear the hell out of it. I wish I could say that this seal pops out easily, but it doesn't. This one's in pretty darn tight. I think it may be rusted in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up around the edges a little bit and apply some penetrating oil around the lip. Then I'm going to let it sit a little while. This one actually has a little bit of a lip around it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it with a small hammer. to try to loosen it up a little bit and see if that helped. Yeah, it's starting to come now. There we go. If you look closely, you can see how it had rusted in place. Also, also notice that this seal is pretty deep. You want to actually pry it from this edge here, which is fairly deep in there. So you want to make sure to get far enough in so you're pressing against the back of the seal, not the outer lip like I did here, which will just bend. Now be aware that a little bit of oil is going to come out from in here, so have a catch pen underneath to catch any drips. Next you need to pick which puller to use on the bearing. You just take the puller and try to slide it into place. If it doesn't fit like this one, this one barely fit, doesn't fit, it won't work, obviously. So you want to find the next one down, and in this case, it's this one, which is the smallest puller in the kit. To set up the puller, you need to back off the lock nut fairly far. So then you take the puller, you slide it through the hole, you pick it up to have it catch on the top of the bearing, then you pull back and now it'll be in place. Then you take the lock nut and you cinch it down. Then you take a wrench and tighten it down. Just snug it up, you don't have to make it super tight. Now you take your slide hammer and you screw it into place on the back of the puller. So you want to snug it down as far as it'll go. Then you want to hold on to the back and pull. As you can see, it's starting to come. There 
and there you go. And there's the bearing. So now that the bearing's out, you want to inspect the bore. Make sure there's no sharp edges or any gouge marks. You also want to clean it out with a nice paper towel. If you have any rust, like mine did, you can take a little bit of emery cloth and just rub it in here to clean up any of that rust or any sharp edges you may have created when you're trying to remove the seal. Okay, and now you're ready to put everything back together again. To get the bearing and the seal in, you need to run another tool from your local auto parts store. It's a bearing and race installer kit. It's part number 27119. And inside it, there are a series, a graduated series of plates that you can use as the driver. And then you have a shaft that you can beat on with a hammer. So you take your new bearing and you match up the size plate to one that is not larger than the outer diameter and also not smaller than the inner diameter of the metal housing. In this case, it's the number three out of the kit. You set up the driver by putting the plate on the end of the shaft and putting the bolt through the top. The bearings I'm using are made by Timken. They're part number TM5707. Before installing the bearing, you want to put a little bit of oil on the outer surface. This will allow it to slide in easier. So then you put the bearing in place then you put the driver in place like that and then you take a hammer and just tap it into place. So you keep tapping until it's fully seated all the way back. You'll notice there's a little ridge that appears right there. That's how you know when it's all the way back. You'll also be able to hear a difference in the tapping noise once it's solidly in place. Next you want to get your new seal. This one's also made by Timken. It is part number TM8660 S is in Sam. So with this seal, unlike the stock one, it doesn't have an outer lip. You don't want to drive this one in too far. So what you do is you find one of the driver plates that's bigger than the hole. So like the bearing, you want to pre-lube the outer edge of the seal. Then you take the seal, you start it a little bit, take your driver and tap it into place. So now what you want to do is you want to pre-lube the bearing and the seal. And what I like to do is I like to take a cap full of gear oil and pour it in until it starts to flow out a little bit. That means that you've reached the inner lip of the seal and you've definitely gone over the inner lip of the bearing. And then you just work the bearing around a little bit and that'll pre-lube it so that it's not running dry when the first time you go down the road. Then what you also want to do is take the a little bit of oil and wipe it around the inner part of the seal because you never want to run a rubber seal dry initially. You want to have a little bit of lubrication on it for when the first time something's spinning against it. So also don't forget to clean around the whole area so that you don't get a false positive later on thinking that it's leaking again when in actuality it's not. Just use a little bit of brake cleaner and wipe all this down. You don't want to get brake cleaner in here so you can just use the driver to cover up the hole as you hose everything down. Then you take a rag and just wipe everything down. And that's pretty much it. You've now installed the new bearing and seal. Now you just reinstall your axles and put your rear differential back together again and you're all set to go. You can check out my video on how to install spider gears on how to put everything back together again properly. Again, I'll link to that in the description. So I hope this video helped you out. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this one, please subscribe.